Hey everybody, welcome back to this month's OCD Gaming News. And girl, there is a lot to talk about. So let's get to it. First things first, I have to give a special shout out to my beloved Patreons at the infected level. Big shout out to D Cells, Finn Jacobs, Dave934, Dark Wolf92, Daniel Kelly, and Cody Neff Rogers. Thank you for all your love and support. I appreciate you all so very much. Now back to the news. It's time for the Gamers Court. Now, today on the docket, I have got a case of snitchery and foolery and spiller, spillery, <laughs> spilling the tea <laughs> and snitching on uh, some games that were not quite ready to be announced yet. One game especially. By this time, you know that Kojima has been working on a game that is not Death Stranding 2. We will get to that in a minute. But he has been working on a game that was leaked by Tom Henderson, a journalist, before it had a chance to be announced. And he kind of spoiled it for like everybody. I do not like it when that happens. Let the people reveal when they're ready to do their reveal. You gotta let a queen do her reveal when she's ready to reveal. Don't spoil it. And uh, he had spoiled it. Let's get into it. Tom Henderson, writing for Try Hard Guides, revealed. He revealed that he had seen early footage of overdose but was requested an anonymity by the person who leaked it to him. And he couldn't share the video but he said that he had seen Miss Qualley from uh, Death Stranding who portrayed Mama in Death Stranding uh, was seen in the gameplay footage wearing a blue dress and is seen walking through dark corridors and flashing lights. Now the footage is supposedly in third person but Henderson was told it could also be played in first person. Now the problem with him spilling this tea at the Xbox event at Summer Game Fest, Xbox has done their own presentation like since E3 is no longer you know here for, for the time being probably we'll never see E3 again. So they made the announcement that they are working with Kojima on a game and that Kojima still has a good working relationship with PlayStation, don't worry, uh, to all us PlayStation fans. But he is also his own independent contractor. Uh, I don't blame him. After dealing with Konami, he's a free agent. He can do whatever he wants. Um, but they kind of ruined the surprise that he was working with on this game. And that kind of took away from the excitement for everyone who might have been surprised. The big surprise was that it was for Xbox and not for PlayStation. But still, so Miss Qualley is in it. Um, supposedly, allegedly, the name of this game is Overdose. This has been widely reported. It has been all over. I am not spilling any tea that has not already been spilt. But the fact is, is that right before he kind of just like, why you gotta ruin it? Oh, prison, prison bitch. <laughs> but a lot of the journalists came for him for spilling this because I'm sure that other journalists has known about it but they are not allowed to talk about it yet. So this ruins it for everybody else when they might get some inside information and uh, be prepared for when the story drops. Like they, 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 I feel like this, this screws over everyone. So what had happened was the journalist came, had come from Mr. Henderson and they said, you shouldn't be spilling this tea. No hate to him. Like nobody sent him any hate. That's like not what I'm about. I'm just reporting the news, bitch. So he also tweeted, I love the gaming, how the gaming industry is now looking at the morals of leaks when they wouldn't hesitate to cover such information if they hadn't signed an agreement. Yeah, that's kind of like the law. Like you're signing a contract not to spill the tea. Um, to be clear, I have never broken an NDA, but I would also never sign one in the current journalism landscape. So he might not have technically broken NDA, but it was shady AF, bitch. It was so shady. Especially since Summer Game Fest was only like two days away. Now that Summer Game Fest and the announcement has been made, Kojima has been, is working with Xbox. Um, like everybody was shook over it, um, but I don't think everyone's as concerned now that they know that Death Stranding 2 has been leaked by Norman Reedus, but we'll get to that. Now we know Kojima has been floating the idea of a horror game that he wanted to make people crap their pants um, he wanted people to be so scared playing it, so I'm assuming that this is what this is. His horror game come to life and that Death Stranding 2 is uh, going to happen, but this horror game is going to happen. There was talks of him working with Jinji, uh, Jinji Ito a couple of years ago. I think it was right after Death Stranding dropped, um, but nothing ever came of that so far that I know. Not like Kojima's telling me anything. <laughs> Ain't nobody telling me any insider information. But I hope this is the horror game that we are living and breathing and dying and waiting and hoping for. <laughs> but the fact that he had spilt this tea right before the announcement was made was just such a letdown. No one's ever going to trust you with any information ever again. You just screwed yourself. You just played yourself. Like you just literally played yourself. Gag order immediately 
Don't snitch. Don't spill because you're only hurting yourself. No one's going to come to you for any stories. No one's going to give you any tea. Everyone's going to know you're going to snitch. <laughs> so um, on the Gamers Court, we do not approve of snitches. Gag order for you. And don't be so shady. Next case. Okay. So as everyone must know by now, on May 20th, Norman Reedus had literally spilled the beans accidentally. This is not like an on purpose. This is an, an on accident. <laughs> he was in an interview and he just literally blurted out that, you know, we're working on Death Stranded 2. It's in the very early stages. And everyone was like, what? Like he didn't even realize he wasn't supposed to spill the tea. Like, doesn't he sign NDs? I don't understand. I think that he thinks it's like TV and movies maybe that where they're like, oh, let's promote, promote, promote while it's happening, while it's happening. Video game tea is very on the down low until the very last minute. It's about the reveal. It's about the drama. It's about everything else. And he literally spilled the beans, uh, I think totally innocently because I don't think he even realized that he was not supposed to say anything. We just started working on the second one. Rita's told Leo edit via Nebellion on Twitter when asked about Death Stranding. He edited, it took me, took me maybe two or three years to finish all the mocap sessions and everything. It takes a lot of work. And then the game came out and it just won all these awards and it was a huge thing. So we just started part two of that. <laughs> Reedus, who starred in the original as Sam Bridges, has seemingly leaked what would have been a surprising sequel announcement despite a considerable 5 million copies as of March 2021. Kojima Productions has been quiet about its future projects. I feel like this is the world's worst kept secret. Like, we kind of knew this was going to happen, but just the drama of the reveal would have been lovely. No hate towards Norman Reedus. I think it was a totally innocent mistake, and I'm very happy that it's getting a sequel. I love Death Stranding, and I can't wait to play the sequel. Hideo Kojima took it in stride. He literally posted this tweet about, now go to your private room, my friend. Back in the days when he visited Norman Reedus, I think in LA, or when he had seen uh, Negan's bat, and they were like, messing around taking pictures with um, the bat, pretending like he was going, you know, the famous scene with, with Negan and and Glenn. He was probably really upset that he kind of blurted it out, but maybe it takes the pressure off him in a way that he doesn't have to worry about being so secretive, but that's his whole judge. He loves to spill little secrets, little clues. Follow his Twitter, follow his Instagram. You will see clues because going back, I have been tracing from before he revealed Death Stranding. Uh, all the clues, uh, there were so many clues there. So I follow him very closely to see what he posts. But now we know we can relax a little bit. We know what's coming and I'm kind of relieved. I'm kind of relieved. <laughs> now, speaking of snitches, bitch, a vague tweet from the Twitter account, The Snitch, had leaked one day before the summer game fest. I hate this. I hate this. I love it, but I hate it. You know what I'm talking about. Announced that The Last of Us Part 1 would be coming to PlayStation 5 and PC on September 2nd of 2022, a mere three months away, less than three months away. It was just a vague tweet. And lo and behold, the next day at Summer Game Fest, it was one day before, it was kind of, it was leaked that it was coming out. Neil Druckmann went on Summer Game Fest and he had a, they had their own segment on The Last of Us. Okay, so let's break it down because a lot of shit happened uh, on the Game Fest. The snitch was correct, bitch. <laughs> the snitch was correct, bitch. <laughs> Okay, now let's break down all the Last of Us news that happened at Summer Game Fest. First of all, and all the Last of Us news. Now, I literally gasped when I saw this for the Last of Us HBO series that there might be some scenes that might explore Ellie's mom. Now, here is a quote. In the HBO show will reportedly be making some notable changes according to reputable insider viewer Anon. The Last of Us on HBO will feature flashback scenes that weren't in either of the games. Some of these will feature Ellie's mom, Anna, who is not visibly seen in the game. She is mentioned multiple times and Ellie even carries items that belong to her mother with her, but she dies before the audience ever gets to meet Ellie. Due to this structure of TV, it seems like the show will take some liberties and allow the audience to spend some time with Ellie's mom. It's unclear if any of these flashback scenes will feature Joel before the outbreak or before the events of the main story. I was thrilled. Now, if you go way, way, way back on my channel, I had done some predictions videos for The Last of Us Part Two, and I, one of my main wants was that I was hoping that we would get a story, a backstory for Ellie's mom and for Sarah's mom to see Joel back before Sarah in the before times, just a flashback. 
and I was hoping that we would see something of Ellie's mom, Ellie and Mar uh, Ellie's mom Anna and Marlene together in the past before Ellie came. That did not happen, but maybe it will come to fruition in this HBO series. So now we have the HBO series has officially finished. It has been wrapped. Um, hopefully we will see it soon, not in 2022, but hopefully the beginning of 2023. That date has not been confirmed, but it's coming out definitely 2023. So not only do we have that wrapped and confirmed for 2023, which is five, five and a half months away, um, we also have confirmed this was one of them. Everything has been leaked, pictures online, videos behind the scenes from the TLOU leakers all over Canada where they've been filming. But from confirmation, one thing that was not spelled was that Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson have cameos in the HBO series. They play actual characters. They're not just doing like a little cameo. They are actual characters. We have no idea who they're playing. They're not playing Joel and Ellie, Joel and Ellie obviously, but they have substantial roles because they helped shape these characters, make these characters, make this franchise what it is. And I am so thrilled. I was like, if they do not have them in there, God, you know I want to see Nolan North as the David character, but he's not in it. David has already been cast. Um, but I want to see Nolan North in there a little bit. I would love to see it. I would like to see it. Ashley and Troy is in it. Backstory of maybe the mama and, and Anna. It's going to be everything, bitch. I'm so freaking excited. I can't wait. Like, will we ever see who Ellie's dad is? I want to see the mother of the revolution. She's practically Miss Sarah Connor giving birth to the revolution. <laughs> like Terminator style. I live. Imagine if you see a baby Ellie. I will die. I will die. <laughs> also, Naughty Dog is... It was announced that they're working on an online multiplayer, which is supposed to blow everybody out of the water. That we saw one piece of concept art and it looked stunning, gorgeous. Neil also confirmed that he's working on a new game project to be announced whenever they damn well please, no one knows. It's too early to talk about. So it's probably the beginning stages. Now this goes back to his little sneaky, sneaky tweets where he did the three shush emojis. Um, and he did it again when he met uh, Herman Hulse, came to visit Naughty Dog, and they said, good to see what you're working on, and did the three shush emojis. So multiplayer, the PS5 release for The Last of Us, and this new project, which I'm very, very excited over. I wanna see something brand new. I don't wanna see anything Uncharted. I don't wanna see any more The Last of Us. I wanna see something brand new, and I'm excited, bitch. <laughs> Okay, so you know I am a big fan of Ben Studio. They are on the wall of fame. I love Days Gone. And I'm very excited that they just re revealed their new studio logo. It looks gorgeous. Um, the Twitch reveal was very exciting. They did like a little background story of Ben Studio. Um, so check it out. Check them out. They are working on something. I don't know what they're working on. They have not made any announcements yet, but they have been hiring like crazy. They have been hiring like crazy. Even in their Twitter bio, Twitter bio says, uh, Ben Studio is hiring. Uh, so check it out. Check out Ben Studio. Support them in any way you possibly can. They are the nicest people on the planet. I totally support them and I cannot wait to see what they're working on. Would I love to see a Days Gone too, of course, but that's not going to happen. But Days Gone will be forever iconic and I can't wait to see what they're working on next. Now back to the, some more Naughty Dog news. Uncharted movie has officially made $400 million, bitch. That's a lot of gold coins. $400 million. Nathan Drake and Sully's eyes must be rolling back into their head. That's a lot of money. You know the sequel is happening, especially since it's so wildly successful. It was panned by critics, but you know what? I was it Oscar worthy? Absolutely not. Do I still never ever see Mark Wahlberg as Sully? It kind of ruins it for me that he's Sully. Like still to this day, I never saw him in that role at all. I love Tom Holland. I think he's great, Nathan Drake. I think he's perfect for Nathan Drake. Uh, don't fight me on this. It's all right. You can have your opinions, but 400 million. I can't wait to see the sequel. It's a good time. It is not Oscar winning. Sully is no Meryl Streep. <laughs> he is no Al Pacino. But uh, it's good fun and it's good to see um, the love for Uncharted series and Nathan Drake. Now, A Plague Tale Requiem. I am so excited for this game. Bring on the rats. Bring on the savagery, bitch. I cannot wait. I am so excited for this game. It is coming out this year, still on track for this year. And as uh, I'm recording this on the 14th, yesterday they announced on the 23rd of June, they will be making an announcement 
for the release date. Finally, we will get the release date and they will be showing new gameplay. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Asobo Studios are they're so nice. They reached out to me with the first game and they have been so supportive of me. I just love them and support them 100%. They are the best and this game is the best it looks stunning i have been waiting for the sequel since i rolled the credits on the first game honestly we will get to see it all on june 23rd merci beaucoup mrs sobo studio <laughs> now tarsier studios the studio who brought us little nightmares you know i love that game i'm i was obsessed with it uh the sequel the DLC, everything, I've played it all. I don't know what they're working on, if it's gonna be in the Little Nightmares, but I am so excited to see what they're working on. So Sony has announced a Horizon Netflix series, a God of War series, and a Gran Turismo show. Revealed in an investor briefing on May 26th and confirmed by industry insiders, including David Gibson on Twitter, Sony president Jim Ryan revealed during a Q&A that the company was expanding its entertainment adaptations even further. The long-rumored God of War series and other shows will join PlayStation exclusives, including The Last of Us, Uncharted, and Ghosts of Tsushima, and being adapted to other media. Though there is no inclination as to when these series will be released now, we know that Ghost of Tsushima is in the process of being made a movie. I can't wait to see that. Uncharted did so well. Like Sony is really branching out into other medias and I think they're very smart to do so. It keeps the franchise going without having to churn out a game every five, six years. They can do new projects or they can do other things too while still keeping the franchise alive and it still makes the money. It still keeps the fans happy. <laughs> Here are some interesting PlayStation PC numbers for this year. I still would like to see the lifetime sales for Days Gone from PlayStation. I don't think we will ever see that, but uh, I think we need to see and I think we deserve to see it. I want to know how many units that Days Gone has sold, just for my own curiosity. That it was kind of pan that they did not do as well as they said it did, but the numbers do not lie, bitch. So here are the official PlayStation PC numbers revealed by Sony. Horizon Zero Dawn, 2.39 million, $60 million in revenue. Days Gone on PC, 852,000 and 22.7 million in revenue. I mean, that's a lot of money, bitch. God of War, 971,000 and it made 26.2 million in revenue. Sony is forecasting huge PC growth for the next fiscal year. There's going to be more stuff coming to PC. Uh, uh, not right after release, but at least a year or two after. Absolutely. Speaking of Days Gone. Speaking of Ben Studio, our beloved John Garvin from Ben Studio, who was had left or was asked to leave Ben Studio right after Days Gone was released, has been working on his own things. He has been living his life. He has been writing books. He has been arting. He, he does his on his YouTube channel. He does his painting videos, which are really great to watch. They're very Bob Ross. Um, and, I, and I love to watch him. He's very talented. So he does the writing. He's an artist. He does everything on side of that. But some people have been wondering if he's going to be getting back into video games and he had a little something to say. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? Now, he had alluded last month on the gaming news, we had talked about how he had alluded to having some things already in the works, but we have yet to find out exactly what it is, but we might find out soon. From this tweet, someone tweeted at him, John Garvin deserves his own studio, just like Hideo Kojima has. John Garvin retweeted this with a comment that says, hold my beer. So is he going to have his own dev studio? Is he going to be working on his own IP? I can't wait to see what happens. I hope we see him at the helm. I love Days Gone and that was his baby and it was everything. Uh, everyone else at Ben Studio too, not just him. Obviously, you can't make a video game by yourself that big anyway. So I can't wait to see what he's working on. We will support him definitely uh, in his new endeavors. Good luck. <laughs> Now, if you are new here on the channel, or if you have just landed here from outer space, and you don't know, I literally love heavy metal. I live, breathe, die for it. I'm wearing my Brutal Legend shirt right now, which is a video game about heavy metal. If you haven't played it, you better. You better. Um, it is everything. My favorite video game of all time. Uh, made by my beloved Double Fine. But there is a new metal game on the horizon. Hellsinger, bitch. It looks amazing. Not only does it look amazing and fun to play, it has a whole heavy metal soundtrack, heavy metal singers, and it looks so much fun. It looks like it's so much fun. When it comes out, 
I want to play it so bad. I think there's the I think you can play it like a demo on on Steam right now. Are you excited for this heavy metal shooter? First person shooter. It looks amazing. Now Troy Baker is in it and as well as Jennifer Hale they voice it. I don't know if they sing in it but they definitely have voice parts. Uh, they are voice acting in this game. It looks like a lot of fun. People are living for it. <laughs> I know we're all desperately waiting for God of War Ragnarok to come out and there are a lot of rumors floating around. They still say it's coming out 2022 but David Scott Jaffe, the guy who worked on the first way 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 back in the day, said that he heard from industry insiders that it's going to be delayed till 2023. I don't think so and I'll tell you why because they have been on track it was supposed to come out in 2021, if you remember correctly. So it's pushed back to 2022. We still haven't heard anything about it. And even Corey Borla came out and did like a little video, I think it was like a month or two ago, saying it's still on track. We're just going to keep our noses to the grind. So we're going to keep on working. I believe that it'll be out this year. And if it's not, it's not. You know what? We have so many great games this year. It'll give us something to start off 2023 with. If not, I'm not worried about it. But I really think it's coming out this year. I think it's my personal opinion. I think it's coming out the first week of November, the very end of October or the first week of November. I think I can pinpoint it that closely. Sony is supposedly allegedly having a, another state of play the end of June. So this has not been confirmed. This is just what has been going around on the interwebs. So do not quote me. This is not confirmed tea. <laughs> this is not confirmed. But I think what's going to happen is they're going to have like a, a little presentation and revealing the release date. And I think it's going to be the last week of October, first week of November. But whenever it comes out, I will play it. I'm not mad at it. If it comes out 2023, that's okay. I'm going to have a Plague Tale and <laughs> to play, um, which I think that's going to come out in December. So I'm really excited for it. I hope it comes out earlier than that. I hope it comes out the beginning of October. But either way, I'm so hyped to play it. And I'm so excited to get my hands on both of those games. Now, what do you think? Do you think it's coming out before the end of the year? I hope so. So not only have they committed to, to releasing the game in 2022, they have over 60 plus accessibility options for the game so everyone can play. And I am so thrilled that game developers are implementing these changes these accessibility options before they start working on the games because it's easier to implement them once they're already in the works while they're developing it instead of trying to add it later so 60 plus accessibility fe features and i'm so so happy that everyone can play and as much as possible nothing should stop someone from enjoying playing video games so i'm so very happy that they are doing this <laughs> I'm sure you have heard by now in the United States, you are able to purchase the PS5 with the Horizon Forbidden West package, the whole console bundle. The only way you can get your hands on the bundle right now is to sign up for the PlayStation lottery system. For the uninitiated, head over to the playstation.com and register for an opportunity to purchase a PS5 from PlayStation Direct. If selected, Sony will email you a link that's specifically tied to your PSN ID if you used to register. You can still try and get it. I don't know if it's still running now, but if you were lucky enough to get it, uh, I'm very happy. Congratulations. That so far is my game of the year. I love it. Okay, also from Ben Studio, they announced that Siphon Filter is coming to the PlayStation Plus. It will include trophies, and then it also includes a platinum trophy. So all your platinum trophy hunters out there, get your life. I know Kev the Cap, Kevin McAllister from Ben Studio has already platinum. Did I saw his platinum uh, tweet? He, he tweeted last night that the platinum, he got the platinum for it. He is the biggest Ben Studio fan uh, ever and he works there. I am excited too. I want to try and play it too. I've never played Siphon Filter so I'm very excited to check it out. Excellent work agent is the name of the platinum. Very cute. I live. <laughs> Raven QA officially becomes the first union in the U.S. in the gaming industry. Congratulations. Raven Software employees win uni unionization vote, becoming the second formal video game union in North America and the first within a major U.S. publisher. Raven Software's quality assurance team, a core part of the studio. QA is the, always the one that gets left in the dust bitch so i'm very happy to see them that they were able to accomplish this part of the studio that contributes heavily heavily to the call of duty series and specifically warzone has voted 19 to 3 in favor of unionizing this is the next and most dramatic step an ongoing saga that started with layoffs last year while not the first gaming studio to unionize in north america that distinction belongs to beast breaker developer vodeo games raven's qa department is perhaps the most prominent under a large and infamous publisher activision has been accused of attempting to bust this union as recently as today 
according to a new report by Bloomberg. This was reported on May 23rd. I am all for the unions in the gaming industry. We need to protect our people who work there. Just fair working environment, fair and healthy working environments. I don't think that's a lot to ask for. Here are the video game releases for this upcoming month. I am playing The Quarry right now. I absolutely love it. It's giving me all the Until, de uh, until Dawn vibes that I'm living for. I have already finished Horizon Forbidden West. It is coming up on the channel. You know, I record and then I edit, but it is my game of the year and you don't want to miss. You do not want to miss my reaction to the ending. The game was everything. No spoilers. You will never hear a spoiler from me, but uh, so that's coming up on the channel. I'm going to try and do every other day until uh, until I keep saying until dawn it's from Horizon Forbidden West and the quarry until the ending of Horizon Forbidden West then I'm going to go back to every other day because it is a lot it is a lot to do one every day I can't do it but for now until because we're so close to the end I have to do it okay so here is the artwork work bitch now let me tell you something. The community came out in droves this month for the artwork. I am so happy that you guys share your VP shots and your beautiful artwork with me on the channel to share with everyone. Thank you so much. You guys really came through this month. Let's give a big shout out to all my contributors for the artwork. Here is a shot from Big Sumo. Thank you, Big Sumo, for contributing again this month's VP shot. Um, it's gorgeous. I'm so, uh, I, I love seeing all these beautiful shots. I do not have time to take VP shots, but I do appreciate them so much. I think they're gorgeous. And here is one from Owen Blackheart01. Thank you so much for sending in your beautiful artwork, VP shots. There are four gorgeous shots uh, from Horizon Forbidden West. Thank you so much for sending me these gorgeous shots. And big shout out to Project Gameverse, big supporter and friend of the channel. Thank you so much for sending me these gorgeous shots. Thank you so much for sharing with us. I really appreciate all the love for all the VP shots and all the video games. We also have uh, Miss Rain, an OG of the channel, a good friend to the channel. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful VP shots with us and the, the gorgeous shots with us. And here is one from Tori Troublemaker. Thank you, Tori Troublemaker also for contributing to this month's VP shots. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. I think this is the most contributions I've had in one gaming news episode. So I am so happy to see it. Thank you so much for for, for sharing with us. I really appreciate it so much. Okay, and now it's time for the yes. Yes, bitch. And the mess. My yes for the month. I don't think you have to ask twice or worry about what I'm picking for my yes of the month. It is Horizon Forbidden West. It is Aloy. I finished it this past week and I'm still not over it. I am, so, oh, it was everything, guys. I did not expect to love it as much. And I loved the first game. Guys, I loved the first game and the ending for the first game. I was like, I need another one. I need a sequel immediately. I couldn't wait for them to make the sequel. And not only did they improve on everything that I didn't love about the first game they just made everything exponentially better I can't wait to jump back in um now on my patreon I do streams once a week you get an extra video if you're on the infected or the firefly level you get an extra video every week no matter what comes out on the channel and I usually stream like um right now I'm streaming the last of us grounded mode last of us part two grounded mode and it's, it's almost gonna kill me like it's literally gonna kill me so it is ugh. To watch it is is too much. It's it's something else. So what I'm gonna do when I'm finally finished with the ground mode, I'll probably go back and play Horizon Forbidden West to get all the trophies. I'm gonna try, or I might do a new game plus on the um, on Patreon. So you get uh, an extra video a week if you're interested in that. If not, no worries. I really appreciate you guys supporting me on the channel liking my videos please so if you are not subscribed please give a girl a subscribe i am so close to fourteen thousand. i need to get I, my goal is to get to fifteen thousand before the end of the year it's not going to happen but i really really want it to happen so give me a like subscribe share if you can um and see all the shenanigans there um but if not i appreciate you guys being here so very much so y'all are my yes for the month and horizon forbidden west and aloy it's my game of the year it was everything that ending oh everything and now for my mess. Oh, these snitches snitching. <laughs> these snitches ruining it for everybody. Like, imagine having like the best surprise and that you kind of gets taken away from you at that last minute. It takes away the hype from everyone else because the the reveal trailer for The Last of Us Part One was leaked the day 
well, like the night before, I think it was the day of the Summer Game Fest, they leaked the, the trailer for it, and it looks gorgeous, by the way. I don't think I even mentioned it. Um, so the trailer for The Last of Us Part One that's coming out on PS5, they rebuilt it from the ground up, but people leaked it. Um, someone le- It was leaked before that day, um, and it kind of takes away the surprise for everyone. I tried to avoid it. I kind of saw it, like, and I was like, oh, before. So it kind of took away from the momentum of the game and the announcements. So that is my mess with month. Don't be a messy bitch. Don't spoil it for everyone. Uh, certain things you hear rumors, but you're never quite sure. Like, like thing with, with Norman Reedus accidentally leaking. That was like that was not on purpose. So there's no like. I'm gonna leak this like that was a total accident because he just I don't think he just doesn't know no better for everything else let's try and keep it under wraps let's keep that beautiful surprise and that momentum going uh, because that's like the best part the reveals are everything so that is my mess of the month I hope you guys are all doing well thank you for all the love and support on my horizon forbidden west series you guys are killing it thank you so very much for supporting me and supporting the channel and uh, I appreciate every every like every view every comment um i really do appreciate it things have been so busy crazy but once um horizon is of uh, the finale goes up it's going to go back to every other day video because that's the best life balance that i can do right now so um i appreciate you all being here and your support it really means a lot to me so whatever gaming news comes up you know what will be there and we will talk about it next time so thanks so much for being here thanks for watching and i'll be back with more